Are angels actually demons? That's exactly what an ancient heretical book banned by the church and excluded from the Bible reveals. And this shocking book is known as The Reality of the Rulers, and its purpose is to alert the reader to a dark secret. Now what is that secret? It's that the angels are really demonic rulers here to keep you imprisoned on earth because you're actually in hell right now. This is what the church doesn't want you to know. My name is Morg and I'm an ex-Christian and survivor of religious trauma syndrome. My channel is about spreading truth and blasphemy. Now, instead of shouting out some sponsor, I wanna thank everyone who makes my work possible. I've been looking at my channel analytics and I've noticed a lot of you watching that haven't hit subscribe yet. So if you like what I'm about, hit subscribe and hit like, why? So the algorithm will spread this like fire. Now back to the video. The Reality of the Rulers, also known as the Hypostasis of the Archons, is an ancient book associated with a group of heretical Christians known as the Gnostics, and they claimed to hold the secret knowledge of the truth of existence. See, they believed that the rest of the world had been utterly fooled by what would eventually become mainstream Christianity. They thought it was a trap spread by the rulers to keep you on earth, which is hell. But there is a way to escape, to escape hell, to escape earth. And that's exactly what we're going to find out at the end of this video. See, since the Gnostics believe that the angels are actually cosmic prison guards known as rulers or archons, what do you think that makes God? That's right, they believed that God was the chief ruler. In other words, Satan himself. And this next point is critical. Now you're probably aware that in Christianity there is only one God, but I bet that you didn't know that there are many verses in the Bible that say that there are other gods and that the God of the Bible is extremely jealous of them. Just look at a few of these verses from the Bible. You shall not worship any other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous god. For the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous god. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no god. They made him jealous with strange gods, with abominations they provoked him to anger. Notice that God claims he's the only God, but he repeatedly references other gods and is extremely jealous. So jealous that he's described as a consuming fire. Now let me ask you a question. Does extreme jealousy even seem like a trait that a supposed perfect God would have? Now here's the real reason. It's because according to the Gnostics, you are actually God. You're the true God. So what about the God of the Bible? He's actually Satan, who along with his demons imprisoned you in a body, wiped your memory, and trapped you in hell. The reality of the rulers says, because of his power and his ignorance and his arrogance, he said with his power, it is I who am God, there is none apart from me. When he said this, he sinned against the entirety. His thoughts became blind, and having expelled his power, that is, the blasphemy he had spoken, he pursued it down to chaos and the abyss. God sinned by saying that he was the only God. They called him the blind God because he said he was the only God. But who were the others? All of us. According to the Gnostics, we all existed together as one in a realm of divine light. Now, we were divine beings, but then the God of the Bible claimed that he was the only God and having said that, fell into the abyss. The Gnostics described this God as a great serpent with the head of a lion. God, well, really the devil, in his anger and jealousy generated as his children an army of demons, the rulers, and created the material world in the abyss. These demons are mistaken as angels and what would eventually become the Bible. He then took pieces of the divine light and imprisoned them in bodies, wiping their memory and placing them in hell where he demanded to be worshiped and used humans as slaves. See, we are the true divinity, we are the true God that has been trapped in hell by a satanic God and his demons. You can't even escape this hell in death because the Gnostics believed in reincarnation, which means you would just go from body to body for all eternity. But there is a way that you can escape. But first you have to know a little something about 
Noah. Remember Noah, the guy who built the ark and put two of every animal on it? Well, according to the Gnostics, he was as evil as it gets, a servant of the devil. Now, don't you find the story of Noah's Ark strange? Have you ever really thought about it? God wiped out every human being on earth, including innocent children, except for Noah and his family. Now, does that sound like a loving God to you? Or does it sound like an evil, satanic being? So why did God almost drown every human being on earth? According to the Bible, it's because humanity was sinning and rebelling against him. According to the Gnostics, what actually happened was that humanity was beginning to improve themselves and they were starting to wake up. They were beginning to realize the truth about themselves and that God was evil. And that was the real reason that they refused to worship him and the rulers. The purpose of the rulers are to keep humanity trapped and enslaved on earth. Some of the demonic rulers, they came up with a plan. You see, Noah and his family, they were still loyal to them. So they would destroy all of humanity, but God would allow Noah and his children to survive so that they would repopulate the earth with those that would be their slaves. The reality of the rulers says, then mankind began to multiply and improve. The rulers took counsel with one another and said, come, let us cause a deluge with our hands and obliterate all flesh from man to beast. But when the ruler of the forces came to know of their decision, he said to Noah, make yourself an ark from some wood that does not rot and hide in it. But now, here's where things get really interesting because a new character comes on the scene and she's absolutely awesome, a real badass. You see, remember that Noah is traditionally associated with water because of the flood and is an evil servant of the creator God. Well, now comes Norea and she is the opposite of Noah. She knows that she's from the true realm of light and her name is associated with fire, since Nura means fire in Syriac. So Norea approaches Noah and she wants to be let into the ark. When he refuses, she blows on the ark and consumes it in fire. Absolute badass. Now, this pissed off the rulers, and so they meet with Norea to try and lead her astray. God, or the devil himself, approaches Norea and tries to intimidate her by referencing the fact that he raped Eve. But she calls him the ruler of darkness and the cursed and tells him that she's not his child, but that she comes from the realm of light. Now, as you can imagine, this does not go over very well. And God, or Satan, turns to Nerea, gathers his immense power, turns into darkness, and tells Nerea that she's about to suffer the same fate as Eve by him and the rest of the rulers. But she doesn't back down. With her power, she calls out to the light, and when she does, God and the rulers scatter and flee. So the big question now is, could this be true? Could it be true that the earth is hell, that God is the devil, that the angels are demons, and that you are trapped here now? And if that's true, how can you escape? Well, I'll tell you exactly how, but you might be thinking, all right, all right, well, this is just one random book. But there are actually many books that say the same thing, all of them banned by the church. Here are just some of them. So what's going on here? The truth is that this story told by the Gnostic Christians, it's a metaphor. Norea represents someone that didn't fall for the lies of this world and has discovered that she is divine. The Gnostics, through their story, were issuing a grave warning. Because remember, during this time, there was a battle going on for what would be Christian orthodoxy. What Christianity actually was hadn't been established yet. The Gnostics were warning the world that if you went with what would eventually become traditional Christianity, you would be trapped in a world of darkness, serving a false being, and you would never discover your true inner light, your true divinity. So how do you escape? According to Gnostics, it's by not falling for the lies of this world that are everywhere. And instead, by looking within, within yourself, to realize that you're divine and you don't need to worship some god in the sky that demands worship and tells you that you're sinful and flawed. That's bullshit. You are part of the fabric of existence and the essence of reality. Ultimately, like all religions, these are metaphors, but they are powerful. 
To unlock your true potential, your true light, you must look within and actualize your potential. And this is exactly what the Gnostics were saying through their story. So what do you think? Tell me in the comments, and if you agree that Norea is an absolute badass, let's see some flames in the comments. Now, if you like that video, check out my video called Jesus Christ is Lucifer. A big shout out to all my supporters on Patreon. If you support at any level on Patreon or tier two or higher on YouTube, you get access to our hidden Discord server, The Citadel, weekly secret live streams, and a lot more. My name is Morg, and I am Hyperion. Hail, Nutera.